So my name is Pavel Valena. Uh, I work for Red Hat uh, as a package maintainer. Uh, I'm taking care of Ruby, Ruby Gems, Vagrant, Ruby on Rails, and various other gems in Fedora. And this talk will be about a collection of tools and scripts I did uh, gather during my work. Uh, I found that enhancing the, the workflow was, was the way to go for me. And I hope you uh, find the same. So why, why did I do it? I wanted to do uh, packaging consistently in a standardized way and to have more checks. Uh, if I automate something, I can run it all the time not concerning myself with whether I forget about it or not, or if it makes sense, I just run it and I get results. And I also like it. I like getting stuff done and seeing how everything works by itself. And I can do new things like uh, rebuilding all the gems we have in Fedora with all the new versions to see how they work and using them even before uh, they are released. Uh, even if the updates don't get merged, I can use them already or test them in between. So what's the code base? It's, it's something that I just collected. Uh, it's a subject to change. Uh, I try to have every script minimal uh, and every result checked. The pull requests are welcome. Uh, it's mostly in shell uh, using various tools like mock, fat package. And it's highly specialized for uh, Ruby gems, but there are also some generalized tools to work with uh, copper, for example. Uh, workflow is something that should be, uh, from my point of view, enhanced all of the time. So uh, that's the main thing here, I think. Uh, so let me know if you know a better way to do something. And uh, what is documented workflow? Uh, there are many ways to do something, but there should be, I think, the best way to do it. Maybe not for every package, but in some general way, there should be there should be some guidelines and there should be all in one place from my point of view. So this is this is the code base in case you are wondering. You can give it a, give it a go and now to, to do details, what it actually does. So usual workflow is uh, I check for updates, uh, try updating it, uh, do some tests, create pull request, pull request gets reused, and it, get, it gets merged and built. Uh, what I did automate uh, is actually stacking on top of each other. Uh, there's a script to check all the updates to run uh, all the bumping and building and testing and creating pull requests and it can create a pipeline and it can even merge itself and build. So how does it look like? Uh, I have a check update script which runs in a loop. Uh, it checks whether there is some update on rubygems.org. Uh, then if the update is detected and there's no pending pull request yet, uh, it runs the update, uh, which is generally a complex way to gather logs uh, from various uh, tools and to create a pull request if the update succeeds, if the copper build succeed, if the Koji build succeed, and if all the text succeeds. So 
that is how the pull request gets created. Uh, it's not like every script does everything itself. They are layered on top of another. So the functionality uh, can be reused again and again. And in the second step, uh, there's uh, another script running in a loop, which checks uh, whether there's a build present for uh, uh, commits in my branch. I, I call it rebase branch. And when there's a commit but not a build, uh, it checks uh, the status of, of the pull requests. Uh, if there's a LGTM in, in the commands, it actually merges the pull requests. And oh, there's an error. There's not supposed to be gems run. So don't worry about it. Uh, it just runs uh, build. So it gets built, merged, and even the bug gets closed because it adds uh, back to the change log. So if the package uh, request gets created, someone else writes LGTM, and then my script merges it and builds it. I didn't actually touch anything, and the package was updated, reviewed, and tested. But there are also, also standalone scripts, uh, which are actually used from the, from the tooling. Uh, a tool for uh, copper builds, uh, it actually runs uh, the build and gets the logs and checks if the build has succeeded. It stores the logs uh, on the host. The same with Koji build. Uh, there are various tools for working with uh, Pegir and getting a bug uh, that says the package update is available and also a forking tool because uh, I need to have a pull request created but I don't always have fork already created. As I run this on all the Ruby gems in Fedora, uh, I don't even uh, often know what the Ruby gem does or uh, who maintains the package. So that's a necessity. What about bootstrapping? Because there are also packages which depend on each other. I said I'm a Ruby on Rails maintainer, so I did uh, work with this, and I found out that I can use the same tooling for package updates. I have a script to do the uh, sources, preparation and uh, actually handling the build order and some script doing the bootstrapping, but, but that's essentially it. There's some testing on, on top of all the packages and then I build it in Scientech after building it and testing it in Copper. I simply build it in Scientech, Sitech and it gets merged into Fedora. So, uh, what are the caveats? Uh, it's a still process type. Uh, there's some hard-coded variables, but I try to uh, eliminate them all the time. Uh, there are some dependencies uh, which are needed to run this. There are also mock configs. Uh, I expect various uh, copper repos to, to exist, but I would like all of those to be configurable as well as any folders for, for results or logs. And uh, since this is a new uh, upstream project, I might have missed some scripts that I did not include because I have a lot of scripts uh, on my machine um, internally. And as I've said before, this is mostly aimed at Ruby gems. So I'm very interested in uh, enabling other packages or general uh, packages without prefix. Uh, but that's not done yet. And always there are some configs that need to be handled uh, like uh, being able to create the pull request, so you need a hash. 
and smart configs. I didn't do any integrations yet, sadly. Uh, so I will be investigating how to do uh, integration with Rebase Helper, what could be reused. Uh, uh, the same with packets, but that's still uh, GitHub uh, focused more. So I'm not sure uh, how or why would that would do that. Uh, TMT is good for uh, testing. I plan to do testing uh, better in CI, but I don't know how to currently get tests from CI. But when I get them uh, under TMT, I can run it on testing farm, which would be nice. And there's probably endless amount of other tooling that can be integrated or uh, replacing some of the scripts. So let me know. And now for some of the demos, I hope my screen will be uh, legible. So top left, there's a net SSH package. It's a revision package. I simply run a symlink script which tries to update the package but there's no need to update because the version is current the second half of the screen is actually a package that needs to be updated with the same script it pulls uh, the upstream uh, github repository because there are also a script a test package in a standalone file. So it actually parses out a command from spec file and executes that to get an archive. And then it creates a sources file and gets ignore entry. Uh, does the commit with all the changes and runs copper build, with un which unfortunately fails uh, as there are some gem issue. So following on, uh, this is the update script it checks for the updates and basically runs uh what you have seen uh on the previous screen uh there are some uh parse issues but apart from that there was an attempt for update which also fails as there needs to be manual work done but i didn't have to investigate before I simply get a log that some update fails and it needs manual intervention. So, uh, there are various options. For example, if I just want to test some package, I simply run. Pavel, would you mind to uh, make it bigger? Uh, the yeah, I can screen. I can Thanks. make it bigger. Sorry, I, I have a large screen. So uh, as you can see, it runs uh, the mock build as well. Uh, let's get back to that later. And this is the check build script, which goes through all the same repositories and checks whether there's a NVR that is expected versus the current NVR uh, in Koji uh, and whether there's a correct commit that corresponds with my branch in the pull requests or it does various other checks uh, like if the email from the commit is the same than uh, in the pull request and that it's mine. Um, I mean, in the in the change local entry, and that it's my uh, commit. And yeah, this is the first one. 
So these are the tests that get run. Uh, for example, dependency check, uh, which actually succeeded because there are no dependencies which should block this. Um, various other checks. Let me, yeah. So it didn't run the copper and Koji scratch build for some reason, uh, but this is the error message. And this is the same message that will be uh, in the pull request. Uh, there are a lot of pull requests on my um, source Fedora project org. Um, so how about the rails? It actually runs the builds now for rails because I did start an update. Uh, I did update rails two days ago, but I'm now another version is out. And I simply run the script. Which resets uh, the folder says the symlinks not to check out the master repository, the GitHub one, uh, because it has uh, uh, half of the gigabyte. That wouldn't be nice to check out for every package. Um, then it runs the update. Uh, it actually tries to recreate the original source RPM first, and then creates the proper uh, test starballs, etc. Same as regular update. Uh, we have also gem comparison tool, which compares uh, the differences between gems. And so on until it uh, rebases all the packages and then I can run the real build. Uh, there are also monitoring tools, uh, which I have. Uh, there's a status tool, which checks for me uh, what's the status of the gems in the current directory or any packages generally. Uh, I, specific, uh, I specify the branch, which I want to be on. And uh, if there are some commits, it actually writes uh, the one line message for the commits uh, for me to know what's the status of the, of the repository. And there are other as well. Status tools, uh, for example, the one for monitoring, right? Um, monitoring testing. So this actually writes all the failed packages from the copper logs. It parses those copper logs it did download, and those are packages that did fail. Uh, it would write uh, succeeded or running uh, for other packages. And if I write the name of the package, uh, I get the log with the failure. Hey, Pavel, just, just a gentle reminder that you have five minutes left, OK? Yeah, uh, this is actually it. Right on time. So, questions? You're welcome. Uh, there's actually a lot of stuff I didn't go into. There's a lot of other tools uh, that I didn't go into. And uh, various options for uh, all of the tools that I've mentioned that extend the functionality. For example, uh, newly I check whether the uh, mock build route is being used. So I have more mock build routes, similar to the same uh, cached uh, data. 
so I can spawn uh, multiple build routes uh, which fit my needs, for example, uh, with, with the copper repository attached. So I can do multiple uh, packages at the same time. 